Hey, it's Frank, that one web guy, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I want to talk about how to create a better prompts for ChatGPT. I have to slow down on saying that because I get those last three letters all messed up. Um, so, so, what I want to talk about here today is just better ways that you can create either content or uh, information or actually use ChatGPT as a resource. Um, and I'll get into some of that. We'll start pretty simple with some of the different uh, topics and some of the things that we can cover. Um, and then we'll get to a little more advanced. Uh, so stick to the end of the video uh, because I'm going to show you something really maybe, well, it blew my mind when I first figured it out. And then I'm trying to figure out other ways to use it. So uh, hopefully you'll find it useful as well. So, uh, you know, some of the things that we talk about is sometimes we just oversimplify. You know, we think that, you know, we do hear how great ChatGDP is and we don't know how to fully frame a, a prompt. So we come in and put something in about, um, oh, just simple things like uh, how to illustrate something or, or how to, um, you know, talk about how you wanted to uh, write something. Uh, so, you know, we talk about um, certain things about uh, just something like, um, let me start pretty simple here. Uh, write a, an article on SEO. Yeah, yeah we're going to get that. You know, it's going to make a full article. And, it may, you know, it's it's kind of verbose. It's going to give me a lot of information. Yeah, it's an article about SEO, but it doesn't sound, you know, it sounds pretty technical. Um, so we might want to say something a little bit more simplified or be more specific even. Um, so... You may even think about the industry that you're writing for. You know, if uh, maybe you're trying to write an article for something like that, uh, you might say something about um, how would a small business owner uh, specializing in plumbing. I seem to use that topic a lot. My father-in-law was a plumber uh, for the local university here, um, and it just comes to mind frequently. Um, how would a small business owner specializing in, specializing in plum, plumbing utilize SEO? So maybe we uh, get something something a little bit more simple. It's actually giving us a set of terms instead of writing an article. Um, you know, talking about uh, earn quality backlinks, stay up to date on SEO trends. But you know, if they don't know what SEO does really, um, off the way is your website for local SEO search. Um, we could actually say write an article. Um, write an article. This is the first one I did was write an article. So I could say write an article. Kind of compare, combine the two. Write an article for small business business owners um, that own plumbing stores about SEO. So we'll generate, pop the little thing down there. So there, it's going to write it more towards um, towards the plumber. As you can see here, it's some of the things that are talking about key SEO strategies for plumbing store owners. So it's more specific other than just writing an article about SEO. We've, we've niched it down to be just for plumbing owners that have a small business. So you, it's more specific, you know, so if you're trying to write something, uh, maybe you have uh, web services or maybe you're a copywriter or whatever, and you're trying to um, promote promote uh, SEO strategies to plumbers. Maybe you do plumbing websites, I mean, I don't know. Um, just, it was just a topic that came to mind for me. So we wanted to talk about some of those things um, that that you can do with that, you know, trying to be more specific. Um, so we could also think about, you know, different things. Um, uh, one of the things we can think about is sometimes we have challenges writing anything in general, but think about emails or different emails, uh, whether it be cold emails or email sequences or something like that. Uh, you know, you think about marketing emails, but uh, maybe you work for somebody and you're wanting to ask for a day off or vacation time, and you're just like, well, how do I? You know, it's like, hey, I want I want vacation time. So I just kind of playing around with, uh, you know, uh, something like. Um, um, so let's say how to write an effective, effective. 
memo requesting vacation time request <laughs> request <laughs> requesting vacation time so in this case it's going to provide kind of a template and fill in the blank type of scenario um, each time you might get something a little bit different your company letterhead date and that's pretty you know uh, professional obviously depends on the size of the business you're working on so you might want to say something um, right a casual email to my boss asking for vacation time so we get something that's kind of casual but it's kind of uh, it's a little bit longer um, we could say something about uh, think about in that case we said casual um, say write a quick email write a quick funny email asking for asking for time for nope asking for asking to use vacation time hope this email finds you well so, so here's the deal M and Dyer needed some vitamin C <laughs> SEA instead of the letter C uh, and break from the daily grind my brain cells are begging for mercy and I think they're plotting on mutiny blah blah so we got something a little more funny there uh, to add that in there um, so you can think about you know some of the different ways that you could um, you know write something a little bit more um, you know simple or funny or of course it doesn't have to be very you know it could be email it could be um, an article or something like that um, that you could you could write that as well uh, so you know think about the different tones that you could write something um, so maybe we were writing something for um, our website you know. Um, um, let's see something about um, write a short about us page for a um, for an art store in Terre Haute, Indiana just happens to be where I live so we will come up with a few different scenarios here but you can see that it's uh, writing you know it's written some information that gives you some prompts to put in the art store name and stuff like that um, gives you a little bit of information but it says located in the heart of our vibrant community well, who uses those words for writing that so what we could do here is let me go ahead and copy this here this is copy and grab the little Oh, let's just edit. Never mind. Cancel. Copy. Popped it back down here again. So what we might say um, as a copywriter. Well, let's not go there yet. Write a short. Write a short about us page uh, for a store in Terre Haute, Indiana. Write to a sixth sixth grade reading level um, keep it short to keep it short one or two paragraphs so we come up something a little bit shorter I'm hoping yep we just got one paragraph welcome to our art store in Terre Haute we're here to help uh, get you creative and fun with art whether you're painting so th these are words that just about anybody could read um, we don't have these uh, verbose words at the top uh, inspiration supplies uh, supplies you would use of course but you know some of the terms there we have so let's try it one more time here and think about um, you know suggesting the type of uh, the suggesting you know say uh, I want you to act as a online copywriter 
and paste in what we had there before. Uh, write a short story, short about us page for an art store in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, and we'll copy this right to sixth grade reading level. Keep it short. Um, keep it short. One, one, is there one or two? One, two, two paragraphs. Um, focus on the keyword. Um, DIY and we'll leave it at that just so we can see what it says there welcome to our terror store we create where creativity meets fun we're all about helping you unleash your inner artist with our wide range of supplies and DIY kits whether you're into blah 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 so it just do the DIY in there once obviously um, if you're thinking about SEO, you don't want to overstuff paragraphs. Uh, maybe we'd have a couple paragraphs so we could force it to. Let's go ahead and copy the whole thing one more time. Um, and I'm trying to keep this to a certain length uh, on the video. Uh, I'm sure you don't mind either way. But um, So instead of one or two, write it and do keep it short. Uh, keep it short to two paragraphs. And there it gives us two paragraphs um, and we have having a two paragraphs we have DIY in there twice uh, which helps a lot um, so it, but you can see the tone difference between um, the fluidity of this word of this based of here instead of you know because we had the act as a copywriter where in here we just had you just uh, you know write a short about us page so think about how you can frame that um, as you're uh, creating things uh, of that sort um, so an, another area that we could talk about is uh, we think about um, lists. Uh, let's go a different way here real quick. Now let's well, we talked about lists. Let's go for it. So um, <clears throat> maybe we could write a um, what could we do a list on? Write a list of um, Reasons why a 50 plus year old should exercise. Oop, click the little arrow there to bump down to where that. So it's creating a list. Um, in this list, it's given a little bit more information, but it says maintain physical health, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of a short paragraph here. Um, we might expand that a little bit to say something about, uh, instead of saying list, Maybe we say, um, let's go ahead and copy this, move it down here. Um, instead of saying it that way, say explain, and see, instead of write a list, explain, explain reasons. Let's say, let's just change this to explain reasons why a 50 plus year old should exercise. And you can see that the information, we get more information than just creating a list. Um, instead of explain reasons why, let's change this one more time. And I'm just trying to show you some different a avenues here. Explain um, instead of reasons why, explain the benefits, explain the benefits why 50 plus year olds should so it, it's it breaks it down a little bit differently it words it differently it says maintaining filth uh, maintaining physical health i got filth out of that physical health ran together as an individual as individuals age so let's what this one say down here uh, re regular exercise help older adults maintain overall so it gives a little bit more information and a different spin to it same thing um, but again we can say um, if we pasted that same thing in there, explain reasons why. So we could say, as an as a doctor um, for 
older generations. Explain why. So you'll get a little bit more uh, technical terms, I would imagine. Maintaining physical health, regular exercise offer. Helps older adults maintain overall physical health, blah, blah, blah. Um, so and it explains reasons why, like it talks about uh, heart disease, stroke, and stuff like that where we didn't before. So you can see just changing, you know, maybe instead of um, a doctor, we may say like um, a physical fitness uh, guru or um, as a, a gym owner or you know a life coach or something like that. Uh, you could change the different things like that uh, to you know, you can see the result difference uh, and can compare the two. Um, one thing that's interesting that we haven't talked about here, though, um, instead of rewriting this, um, rewrite this, the rewrite the above list as a health and fitness coach. And it's just going to rewrite it um, based on those uh, information. So you can see it's totally different based on those that information. Uh, even the sub the titles are different. You know, each bullet point's a little bit different. Uh, so that's kind of interesting there. Um, so just you know, make use of you know some of those different terms and how you can make you know be specific um, lists. Uh, you think about list versus define or explain uh, to make things different. Uh, we could actually think about uh, if we think about different tools and resources um, we could say something like why is canva a better program didn't say better than what um, it says canva is widely regarded as i didn't get to read all that canva is widely regarded as a superior program for several reasons that talks about that but we could say, what's it comparing it to? It's just it's, it's, it's an opinion based on some information that I found. So we could think about um, what is a competitor program to Canva. So it says a competitor program to Canva is Adobe Spark. Um, I think it's also it's it's actually called uh, Adobe Express now, um, so we can say. Let's see, so how are Canva and <laughs> Adobe Express? different so it gives uh, Canva Express ease of use and exp it breaks it down that way pricing Canva offers both free and premium subscriptions plans with free plan providing uh, Adobe Express offers a free version with basic features and limited access to design materials or assets you can use them so blah 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 so you can think about different things that you could compare you could say give me pros and cons uh, give me but then again, you could say, you know, as a uh, online professional, give me the pros and cons of using Adobe, you know, think about it that way, um, using Adobe Express over Canva or something like that. Uh, so, so those are some other areas that you can think about as well. Uh, something that I like to think about uh, when you're being creative, you're writing content or uh, maybe you have some aspirations of writing. Um, and of course, I always say that if you're writing something uh, for um, like a book or content or something like that, make it your own. Um, you know, you can you can have it generate so much, uh, but it's still uh, make it your own. So uh, something like I would like this is kind of wild i like how this turns out i'd like for you to act as a um well seasoned children's storyteller and write a short story about a girl named Jill and her pet 
Hamster. Um, I would like this to be about 500 words. For a kid's book, you know, you're thinking about what grade level and things like that. You could actually probably put a grade level if you wanted, but I'm going to keep it there here. Uh, so once upon a time, in a cozy little town nestled among the rolling green hills of uh the, there let's see among the rolling green hills there lived a girl named jill she was a kind-hearted blah 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 um for the moment jill laid eyes on peanut peanut's the name of the hamster uh, so it, it kind of uh writes that story for us um so we could say um if we're writing a children's story, we're going to need illustrations. So, uh, provide a description of Jill and Peanut so that we can have it illustrated. Now on these before uh, I've done, you know, I use Mid Journey more so than, um, you know, this comes with Dali now. Um, hey, I think we're stuck here, <laughs> stuck on chubby cheeks. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, Jill is a young girl with contagious smile. Blah blah blah. Peanut is a fluffy golden hamster with soft silky fur that shimmers in the sunlight. He has round black eyes that sparkle. Blah blah blah. Penis cheeks are chubby, and cheeks are chubby, and cheeks are chubby. I've never seen it do that before. I'm going to guess he has chubby cheeks. <laughs> that was a little too funny. So in saying that, so if you're not an illustrator yourself and you want to hire an illustrator, you might ask, um, where are some places that I could get illustrations done online. Now I have an idea where that would be, but I just want to see what they come up with. Upwork, Fiverr, Behance, Dribble, Freelancer, 99designs. I've used a couple of those myself, not for illustrations, but um, I've used 99designs for logos. I've used Freelancer for code. Um, I've used Fiverr many times and I've used Upwork. So uh, I am a graphic artist myself, but sometimes you are just too close to the project or you can't get something you want. So um, I could say um, I want to hire uh, an artist and let's say an illustrator off of the Fiverr website. How would I go about doing that and of course it's going to provide us the information on uh, create an account search for illustrators blah 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 browse the gigs read reviews place an order um, please write a description explaining um, how I would use the character description above please write a description explaining how I would use the character description above to the illustrator character is one of those words I just don't spell right at all uh, to effectively communicate introduction um, if there are additional details be clear so I would just also provide then I would like to introduce you to Jill the main character of the book just kind-hearted and adventurous young girl who loves animals um, something like that uh, just in talks about um, peanut there so uh, we could move along as well for that uh, so the interesting thing is um, we could scroll back up to the description that it gave us here up into the chubby cheeks part um, Let's see, does, does it say anything about um, 
So let's copy this here. I don't use Dolly very much here, but let's go over and uh, write this here. Uh, paste, and we'll see what we get here for, um, it says creating image. I probably should have provided more information than just pasting that in there. So we'll see what we get. This is creating the image. Um, as I said, I usually use Midjourney uh, to write this. Um, occasionally, if I'm, I'm, I've been trying to work on a few books myself, uh, just to see what we can come up with. Um, you know, so with Midjourney, you could actually create a. I guess we could see here what happens. Uh, those are kind of cute. Uh, I've got her on her shoulder, and you know, it matches the description. Um, so we have a couple cool uh, situations there. Dolly's definitely gotten better than when I first played with it. Um, there we go. Please create. I don't know why I have to be um, polite there, but please create a char character. Now I spelled it wrong again. Character sheet for Jill. One of these days I'll memorize what I'm doing wrong there, but in Mid Journey, it would actually create a sheet of different poses for Jill, which comes in handy um, when you're trying to do illustrations and things like that. Um, as I said, I've not done one yet. I've got a story that it generated that I really liked. Um, I put in a little more information of what I was wanting the story to be, about how long, and things like that. Um, then I'm going to go back and generate panels and artwork and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, just kind of cool. So there's our character sheet. As you can see, it's created like different images that we could use for Jill. Um, Except in these, it's more cartoony, I think, than what those are up there. Um, I think these are a little more brighter in the thing, but it gets the point across. Um, so we have, you know, different aspects that we could use for Jill and things like that. It even gives it a little color palette there. It's kind of interesting. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so that's one a different way that we can use that. Um, so um, some th other things that I wanted to talk about is, you know, think about if you don't get the results you want, rephrase. We talked about that already. I'm checking off my checklist here. <clears throat> um, think about you know how we can do things from a viewpoint of. We talked about that a little bit, but let's go ahead and go back to the Chat GPT here and say from the um, <clears throat> from the viewpoint. We kind of covered that a little bit from the viewpoint of a homeowner. What are our critical things to remember to ask that is normally forgotten. Um, you can think about you know things that you don't think about you know about uh, internet access. You work from home or things like that are different things. Um, it says uh, legal documents, home inventory, future plans. Neighborhood information, that's always good. Energy efficiency, regular maintenance schedules, disaster preparedness, HOAs, home security, property taxes, insurance coverage, uh, utilities information, warranty information, maintenance records. Um, as a homeowner, maybe I should say home buyer. Uh, re write, as I said, if you don't like the results, maybe change it a little bit, rewrite. Uh, this list as a home buyer. See what it comes up with. Request maintenance records. Uh, inquire about warranties. Uh, emergency contact information. Utility provide uh, providers and costs. Review insurance, so you, it, it it did change quite a bit. So you just think about that type of thing. Now, if you're um, if you have if you're a seller, if you're a home seller, you may write a um, write a checklist uh, to inform uh, potential home buyers of questions they should ask, or a checklist, or something like that. You know, so those are some things that we can think about. Now, I'm going to jump down to something as I promised, uh, something a little bit more intense, a little bit more. Um, this is a prompt that I had put together, uh, something that 
I'd seen somebody else create a table and I'm like, well, how can I use tables uh, for something that I usually do? You know, as a web designer, graphic artist, there's colors and color schemes that I don't think about. So I generate, I created this list here, and I, I kind of set it up so I could use it over and over. Um, I'd like to do some research for me, uh, so I'm asking it to do some research. Research that says I need you to act as an expert graphic designer for websites and provide four color palette in the hexadecimal that are four colors. Uh, the four colors are main color, secondary color, accent color one, and accent color two. For a, um, we used art store earlier. For, I just put those placeholders in there. For an art store in the Midwest, maybe I can even say that. Um, uh, it says business, that doesn't make any sense, but I could copy that out. Midwest uh, focuses on DIY and craft supplies. Don't need a capital U there. Craft supplies. Um, number of pallets to generate, let's say six. Uh, let's go ahead and take my curly brackets out. Don't need those there. Just a placeholder prompt for me. Uh, six, six suggestions. Uh, so we'll change this one to one through six. Again, remove my braces, I guess is what they call not curly brackets. And the y-axis should show main color, secondary color, and whatever. So we'll put that there. And it should generate uh, some information for us here. Uh, it says as an expert. Um, yep. So it's provided this color palette. Um, these are hexadecimals. If you're not familiar with it, uh, your web person would know. Uh, what those are so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these I'm gonna copy this here and I'm going to pop this in here little story as you can see I've, I've got this already posted up here on a few things uh, I recorded this once uh, earlier this evening and I forgot to turn on the microphone so I'm trying to re-record it um, as quickly as possible uh, to get this out for you guys so I'm gonna copy this one here so we have a blue as our main color um, secondary color would be hopefully something that's contrasting a little pink I uh, wouldn't use those but we're talking about an art store so we really don't know um, let's go here copy this would be an accent color so hopefully that's uh, consistent so we've got a green boy we're looking like an Easter Easter parade here so let's see what do we get here we didn't get the hash hash symbol there copy and this is why I generated uh, six different examples. I got two hashtags there now because I didn't clear the other one. And we got yellow. So I guess that works for a pastel color, be a little bright. Obviously, this would be working around white. Uh, white space is a design element that a lot of people don't think about. But you can see here that we have um, a nice uh, array of colors that we could use. So you can think about, you know, uh, maybe thinking about uh, maybe not for a website, maybe you think about for uh, a book design or. Uh, you're thinking about colors for um, a banner that you're creating or something of that sort. And here's another one that I came up with that I thought was kind of interesting. Um, just playing around. Um, so this one is, I need some research done. I need you to act as an expert book reviewer and provide a list of the top 10 books on website mistakes. I need to know the title, author, and brief description. Create a table with the x-axis showing 1 through 10 and the y-axis showing title, author, and description. So we could create that there. And it does exactly what I asked it to. So it's creating, don't make me think, a common sense approach to web usability. Um, so you know, see 100 things every designer needs to know about people. Uh, you're fa you're my favorite client, you know. So there's a different information here. Um, so I'm just going to play a little bit of fun here. Um, so it's like um, would would you consider Frank Deerdorf's book fifty biggest website mistakes?
Frank Dirter's books, Fit to Biggest Web Mistakes, is indeed a valuable resource when it comes to understanding and avoiding common pitfalls in website development. It provides practical insights. Uh, while I didn't include it in this, the initial list of top 10, it certainly deserves recognition as a useful resource for anyone looking to improve their website design skills and, and create more effective and user-friendly websites. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, of course, the book I did was uh, about 10 years ago, and we're, getting, we're working on releasing that as a second edition. Um, this one was through Morgan James Publishing. Um, actually, I created it myself and did self-publishing, and Morgan James Publishing picked it up and released it on their label as well, so it's kind of cool. Um, but it's kind of interesting that it would come up with that response based on um, the information that I put there. Um, we could reuse this, either of these, uh, for different reasons. So if I took this and, let's see, nope. Um, instead of books, let's try, what else, how, how else could we use this? Um, let's think about, uh, I need you to act as a, um, media reviewer and provide the top 10 podcasts on motivation. Um, we'll just leave it that way and see what it comes up with. So we come up with uh, Tim Ferriss show, Brendan Bruchard, Hal Edward. So those are some good uh, some good things there. Uh, we could think about different things. Um, I need to do some research done as an expert. Um, content analyst. And I'll list, there we go, and provide the list of the top 10, top 10 YouTube videos on phone apps let's go with that one uh, I need to know the title author and brief let's see let's throw in uh, URL in there um, URL a uh, title author and display the URL and brief description so we could put in uh, description and then we'll add uh, URL there URL link URL dis the URL display that's probably not the right word so what we come up with here so it's giving us watch links I can't even roll oh, iPhone iPhone apps best iPhone apps hidden iPhone apps um, he gives us watch here. Um, we can't really look at it this way, but I think if we copy it here, um, let me see if I can do it into Google.com Sheets. See if it'll allow me to start a new sheet. Pop that in there and paste. Didn't make a very nice thing there. Uh, watch, we got a link here. It's doing it as a URL. Let's see what we get. It says uh, it didn't bring in the video ID there. Uh, let's try a Google Doc file new. Uh, let's try it this way Google.com Docs. Oh, well, we can, nah, it's not going to do it in a notepad. I say I have a notepad open over my other screen here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and it says video ID there too, so it didn't do the URL. Um, when I tested earlier, it did. Um, let's see if we could change that. Um, let's go back to ChatGPT and um, 
please provide full URLs for the list above. Let's see what it gives us. Let's see what that gives us here. I've done it earlier. It's in the same, same video ID, so I must not have done something correctly. Um, when I did it earlier, it, it did provide the URLs that we were able to, as you can see right here, actually, I used um, the power of vulnerability. I think I, I can't remember what term that I may have used, but um, it did provide that list for us. As I said, I recorded it earlier and uh, I forgot to turn on the audio. Um, so um, I hope you found those useful. Uh, some of the tips that we talked about here, uh, creating tables is kind of an interesting way to look at things and the things that it could generate for us. Um, let me try one more here. I don't want to end up with uh, broken links here. So um, let's try one more. I'm just kind of curious. Um, paste. I need some research done. I want you to act as an uh, expert um, content analyst and provide a list of the top 10 uh songs of 2023 uh, that might be scary but um let's take the url out i'll figure that out display the so i get rid of the display the url um take out the url display there and see what we come up with it might be scary as i said i probably won't know half these songs unstoppable by taylor swift of course Euphoria, BTS, Adele, Ed Sheeran, Billie Eilish. So kind of interesting that it, it would generate a list on that. I would be curious to know how accurate that is based on the, of course, Taylor Swift is everywhere. And so is Ed Sheeran. So kind of an interesting list. But as you can see, uh, some of the resources that we could generate quickly from this um, video went a little bit longer than anticipated. But I hope you found it useful and maybe uh, help you rethink some of the things that we, the way that you use ChatGPT uh, for your online business. So I'll be back with another video again soon. I hope you found this useful.